Hello again everybody, this is Gusto, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Japanese Self-Defense Forces Ration Type 1. And this is the older style of the Type 1 ration before it was packaged in retort pouches. And several months ago I reviewed some Type 2 JSDF rations, so check those out. These are a little bit different because they are obviously packaged in cans, and some of the items inside them are different. The biggest difference that I can see is that the rice is packaged with the meat item inside the cans rather than separately. This ration was sent to me by MRE Mountain eBay store. He has recently become a very good source of more unusual rations, so if you're interested in finding some of these items, check out the link in the description below for that eBay store. So thank you to MRE Mountain. The items that were sent to me for this review are a complete set of the menu number 7 and then some other canned items that belong to other menus. So I will be reviewing the menu number 7 and then I added an additional side because I had it. Now, there's very little information available on the JSDF Type 1. This is an older ration and is becoming exceedingly rare. So I'm quite excited about getting into this. For the commenters, if you can provide me any background information on these rations, please do. I would welcome it very much. For the menu number 7 items, the largest can is listed as chicken and boiled rice, and then it has two smaller cans consisting of the bottom one which is trout and vegetables, and the top one which is yellow pickled radish. The additional item here I chose to keep in this review because it includes the can opener attached to the rim of the can there, and because it's a can of wieners. So go ahead and go nuts in the comments. The very limited information that I could find on the internet about this ration, and it is very sparse. There were some basic instructions on how to prepare these and specifically how long to boil the items, especially if they contained rice. And that was about 25 minutes in boiling water. So we'll get to that. Alright, so there you go. All the items have been heating up, except for this one, which is a pickled yellow radish. And while these are cooling down, I'm going to go ahead and open this one up. As I stated before, this did have a can opener that was affixed to the rim of, of one of the cans. It kind of sits like that. And it's a little bit smaller than one of the old P38 can openers. And the blade is fixed rather than hinged. It feels to be pretty sturdy because of the bend that's in here. It doesn't seem like it wants to uh, uh, bend the wrong direction, so we'll see how well this opens the can. It does have the same notch there, and it seems like it grabs the can pretty well. Yeah, not bad. All right, there you have it. There is the pickled yellow radish. And it does have a very strong vinegar smell. And I dumped out some of the liquid so you could see a little bit closer without me spilling this all over the place. There you can see five pieces of radish there, packed in the can. We'll get these out onto the tray. And these do smell kind of like a spicy pickle, so it'll be interesting to see what those taste like. Next I'll open the main item, and this one is uh, chicken boiled rice. There are the codes on the top of the can. I do not know what these stand for. I'm guessing that these are early 2000s issue, but I am not sure of that. So if anybody knows how to interpret those date codes, I'd appreciate that. So again, boiled chicken and rice. And the can's very hot, so I'm going to hang on to it with this towel. Try not to burn myself. Alright, there you have it. You see the bits of chicken in there, and rice. 
does have kind of a salty, savory scent to it. I'm going to go ahead and get that onto the tray. Yeah, and pretty good amount of it. Next we have trout with vegetables. There are the codes on top there. It's the same codes as the previous one, as far as the 0903. Again, I'm guessing if that means 2003, but I'm not sure at all. These canes are pretty substantial as far as uh, how hard they are to cut with the can opener, but given the toughness of the material, this can opener seems to be standing up pretty well. Ah, there you go. There's a good sized chunk of fish in there. Some carrots, looks like um, ginger here, and maybe mushrooms or something like that. I'm not sure what that vegetable is. So there you go. I'm just gonna set this aside. And lastly, there is a can of wieners or Vienna sausages. Here's the codes on that one. It's a little harder to see. 1403 is what I see there. All right. There's some liquid in there, I'm going to pour it off. And there you go. There's the sausages. I'm going to talk a little bit about this can opener. It does work pretty well. It's pretty stiff and tough enough to handle these cans. The downside is that they just rub your finger raw. And you can see I've got a heck of a blister there that I cut open. So, decent tool. Probably best to wear gloves. Let's get some of these out. There you can see them in the can. They're kind of a yellow brown color. Uh, they look a lot like hot dogs and they smell like hot dogs. Let's get those, oh, a lot of juice. There you have it. Okay, so let's try this stuff out. First off is the main item, which is the chicken and rice. And that's really all there is in there, just chicken and rice, maybe, maybe some seasoning. There you can see the detail up close. The rice is pretty sticky. The pieces of chicken are pretty uniform in size. All kind of like little cubes there. It does have kind of a salty scent to it. it. Smells pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad at all. The texture of the rice is pretty good. It is it is pretty sticky and a little bit soft. The chicken is, is fairly dense, a little bit more dense than I would have expected. Uh, it does have kind of a salty maybe soy sauce flavor to it, just kind of subtle. But the flavor is not bad at all. It's actually pretty enjoyable. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Next we'll move on to the trout with vegetables. And you can see there's a pretty big chunk of fish there. There looks like some uh, ginger, looks like mushrooms maybe, I'm not really sure. And then there's also some carrots. Try to get a little bit of everything. We'll get a piece of fish and some of the carrot. And this vegetable, that I really don't know what it is, it's green, but there's no uh, list of ingredients on the can, so I'm not exactly sure what that is. Get a little bit of this ginger too. So there you go, a little bit of everything. The fish looks a little bit dry there. Yeah, that's actually not bad at all. There's kind of a bite to it as far as um, the vegetable flavor, and I think that's coming from the ginger. I still, I'm not exactly sure what that green vegetable is. It's kind of leafy and rolled up in there, so I'm uh, not exactly sure what that is. 
but the flavor is very good especially the fish it's very tender it's flaky it's not too salty it's quite a good item next I'll try the yellow radish it's pretty rubbery <laughs> it's uh, actually you can't you can't cut it it just kind of squ squashes together it just kind of looks like a pickle you can see there's some pepper flakes in there so this may actually be kind of a spicy pickle Hmm, that's actually pretty good. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it and a little bit of spiciness at the same time. It does have a pretty pleasing crunch, a little bit more than a typical pickle would have. As far as radish flavor, can't really pick that out. It's just a really strong pickle vinegar flavor. And that's pretty good. And lastly, we'll try one of these sausages. So there you go. These appear similar to a Vienna sausage. There you go. And those are pretty good. They taste just like a hot dog, but they have a stronger casing on the outside of them. So they actually have kind of a snap to them when you bite. Pretty good flavor, very salty, basically the same flavor as a hot dog. So I will add a little bit more explanation to this ration. As I film these things, I'm constantly looking stuff up so that I don't supply incorrect information. In the beginning of this video, I said that this was an older ration, and actually this canned ration is still produced. And these are typically carried by ground troops, and the only difference is that there's two types. One is canned and one is packaged in retort pouches or reheatable pouches. Those tend to be a little bit lighter, whereas the cans are a little bit heavier, a little bit more cumbersome to open, harder to eat on the go. So which ration is issued is going to be dependent on the mission type. This one's a little bit heavier. It is more durable and will last longer, but it is harder to heat up, heavier to carry, and more cumbersome to open. So that's really the difference between the two types of JSDF rations. So I apologize for the inaccuracy at the beginning of the video, but these are still produced. I still don't know the dates of these or how old this particular ration is. So again, if you have any insight on the date codes on these cans, please let me know. So that concludes the... JSDF Type 1 Menu 7. Again, thank you to MRE Mountain for supplying this ration, and please head over to that eBay store if you're interested in finding some interesting international rations. So as always, to my YouTube viewers and subscribers, thank you very much for your support. As always, your support benefits St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Of course, thank you to the YouTube ration review community, as well as the folks on MREinfo.com. So please stay tuned. I have a whole lot more to come. And again, thank you very much for your support. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.